Thank you for joining us for this video presentation entitled Separation of Miscarriage Tissue from Maternal Decidua for Chromosome Analysis by Drs. Gayathri Muragapan, Stephanie Gustin, and Ruth Lati from the Stanford Division of Reproductive Endocrinology and Infertility. Approximately 10 to 20 percent of all clinical pregnancies end in miscarriage. Large-scale studies have shown that 50 to 70 percent of first trimester losses are due to chromosomal abnormalities. Furthermore, the risk of aneuploidy increases with advancing maternal age and is therefore increasingly relevant in the infertile population. In the subset of patients greater than 35 years of age with recurrent pregnancy loss, fetal chromosomal abnormalities are responsible for up to 80 percent of miscarriages. Manual vacuum aspiration, or MVA, followed by chromosome analysis of miscarriage tissue, is a valuable tool for understanding the cause of a miscarriage. In up to 50% of cases, an etiology for the miscarriage can be identified from chromosome analysis, offering patients a concrete explanation for the pregnancy loss, and can also offer an estimate of the risk of recurrence. Several analyses have also shown that chromosome analysis is more cost-effective than evidence-based evaluation of recurrent pregnancy loss. Finally, providing patients with an explanation for their loss has been shown to decrease feelings of guilt and grief. A 46XX karyotype result from analysis of miscarriage tissue, however, can represent embryonic tissue in the chorionic villi or can be due to analysis of maternal decidua, which is referred to as maternal cell contamination, or MCC. We will further explain the terms chorionic villi and maternal decidua on the next slide. The successful separation of embryonic from maternal tissue requires an understanding of placental anatomy. The placenta is composed of chorionic villi of the embryo and maternal blood pooled in the decidua. After implantation, the endometrium changes histologically and is called the decidua. It develops three different regions, as shown in this figure, and the decidua basalis becomes the major portion of the placenta. While the decidua is maternal tissue, the chorionic villi are embryonic tissue. Several studies have reported the incidence of MCC from cytogenic testing of miscarriages anywhere between 29 and 90 percent. Our study is the largest in the literature to examine MCC using molecular confirmation and comparing different centers. From analysis of 1,222 miscarriage specimens from 124 centers, we found an overall 22% MCC rate. Furthermore, over half of the 46XX results were due to MCC. This figure demonstrates the percentage of cases with MCC across fertility centers in the United States. Some centers have less than 5% MCC rates, while others had MCC in nearly half their specimens. We postulate that the high variability of MCC rates across fertility centers can be attributed to differences in the technique utilized for separating villi from maternal cells. We will now review the procedure for separating miscarriage tissue from maternal decidua for chromosome analysis. A MVA is first performed, followed by separation of chorionic villi from maternal decidua using a technique which we will demonstrate. The villi is then sent for chromosome analysis. The technique of separating villi from decidua was originally described by our group in a study in 2002 when we found that the incidence of 46XX results was significantly reduced by washing villi and the detection of aneuploidy was significantly increased, demonstrating that simple changes in technique can lead to large improvements in the success of chromosome analysis. The MVA is a commonly performed JOAN procedure, so review fully and discuss in greater detail the aspects of the procedure that are performed differently for subsequent chromosome analysis of the miscarriage tissue. After the patient is sedated, cervical dilation is performed in accordance with the size of the pregnancy. The uterus is then evacuated using manual vacuum aspiration. To prepare the syringe, set the plunger, as shown in this video, to 30 cc's or halfway before depressing the tabs at the top of the aspirator and then engaging the suction. 
the step is performed differently from a traditional MVA in order to preserve the architecture of the chorionic villi. Once the cannula is connected, the device is inserted into the cavity and the MVA procedure is performed. The gestational sac shown on the leftmost image is commonly measured using ultrasound prior to performing an MVA. After evacuation of all the miscarriage tissue shown in the center image, the villi comprise a fraction of the total amount of evacuated tissue, so correctly identifying the chorionic villi from maternal decidua is crucial for successful chromosome analysis of the miscarriage tissue. Differentiating chorionic villi and maternal decidua can be challenging, so we demonstrate several examples here. The top left image is of decidua, compared to the delicate villi shown on the bottom left, adjacent to the almost transparent gestational sac. On the right, we show an example of decidua adjacent to villi, and below, an image of villi alone. Notice the delicate, frond-like architecture that is characteristic of chorionic villi. The chorionic villi can be visually identified by their white and fluffy appearance. The decidua, in contrast, are red and more dense appearing. Segments of both decidua and villi are sent to pathology to demonstrate completeness of the MVA procedure, while only villi are submitted for chromosome analysis. Identification of villi and decidua can be further confirmed by comparing the densities of the two in normal saline. The villi on the left float, while the decidua on the right quickly sink. Once villi have been isolated from the miscarriage specimen, the next and final step is dissection of decidual tissue off the villi. Maternal decidua, which can be visually identified as pinkish red in color, can be separated from the chorionic villi by grasping the tissue with smooth pickups and agitating the specimen as shown in this video. If this is unsuccessful, the tissue containing both decidua and villi should be incised completely from the specimen, leaving only chorionic villi for chromosome analysis. In this video, we have demonstrated that when genetic testing of miscarriage tissue is indicated, this simple technique can decrease MCC rate and increase the accuracy of testing without requiring any special equipment. The same technique for identifying villi has been used in our clinic for first trimester DNCs using mechanical suction. We hope that by demonstrating this technique, we can promote the utilization of this important aspect of miscarriage evaluation. Thank you for your attention.